Now we are going to get the covers for the 7x9 sketchbook or for my beginner classes and intermediate classes. So what you need to do is take your sketchbook sheets. We're only using one at a time so you can just pick one um, and put the other aside. The very first thing that we're going to do is to look at our paper and figure out if, if there is a particular direction that you want your pattern to be facing. Um, with this granite style sketchbook paper, um, it doesn't have a particular direction that it needs to be, but if I had something along these lines, I would definitely want to make sure that you could read the words properly. Um, this is also the case if you had a particular pattern, maybe like this, where maybe you want the bricks to be at the bottom of your cover as opposed to being on the right side or vice versa. So what you need to do is take your paper and place it in front of you exactly how you want it to be on your cover. Once you do that, you're going to take your hands and we're going to flip it over. So we have, because we're going to work from the back of the page. Then, without moving it, you are going to draw an arrow facing away from you. This will help us with the directions throughout this video. Um, we're all going to return to this position, the arrow facing away. We're going to call it either ground zero or the home position, uh, but this is where we're going to begin. For this segment of building your covers, you are going to need the following items. You are going to need a pair of scissors, you're going to need your ruler, you will need your glue sticks, and you will also need your cover that we cut out of a cereal box in addition to your pencil, um, or I'm using a pen so it's clear on the video for you to see. So these are the items you're going to need. You can push everything off to the side except um, your pencil and your ruler and paper. Okay, so again, we're going to be using this ruler as a tool, not necessarily a measuring device where we're going to be using the numbers to make marks. Instead, we're going to use it as a template to make sure that we have the proper width that we need for our cover to be protected. So, I am right hand dominant, um, which means I write with my right hand, and with my left hand, that will be my non-dominant hand. So, I am actually going to turn the paper a little bit so I can see better myself, and I am standing up over my paper to make sure I can see down, but I'm going to take my ruler to the very edge of this paper and make sure that I can still see the paper edge here, because I don't want to overlap and then my spacing be off. So make sure you can see the paper and with my non-dominant hand, I'm going to hold the ruler, apply pressure in the center of the ruler. And this is really important because if you apply pressure only at one side, when you draw, you could possibly move the ruler like I just did. So you don't want to do that. Make sure your ruler is lined up against the edge of the paper, apply pressure in the center of the ruler. And then once you have everything in the right position, you can make your first line. So again, this first line needs to be above your arrow at the very top of the page. And once you do that, you can return it to the home position. The second line that we are going to make is actually going to be on to the left of this arrow. You are going to do the same exact thing that we did up here. So we are going to take our ruler, line it up on the very edge, hold it with our non-dominant hand in the center of our ruler, and then make our line. Now if you're a left hand dominant and your right hand is your non-dominant hand, you're probably going to have to move the paper around to make sure that you are not crossing over your hand. Um, it's just kind of proper ruler etiquette. Um, you don't want anything in the way to destruct your straight line that you're trying to draw. 
When you are finished, please return your paper in the home position where the arrow is facing away from you and look at me when you are finished. So now that we have these two lines, I know none of you have three lines because we wouldn't have moved ahead without following directions. So to make this really easy, you're going to take your cover that should have your name on it. It also should have your period. And you are going to take it and place it in the corner of these, these the intersection of these two lines that we made on this paper. Make sure that you're not over top of the lines. You want your book cover to be perfectly lined up on both lines, the top and on the left. And when it is in place, you're gonna hold it down with your non-dominant hand, and you are going to trace all the way around your cover. I don't want you just to do it once. I want you to do it a couple times so you have a nice, thick, bold line. Yours will be in pencil. Make sure you get these corners nice and sharp. This is, will be helpful for when, for our next steps. Okay. Once you have your box traced or your, your cover traced onto your paper, the next step is to highlight the corners. This won't seem important until a little bit later, but it is definitely a useful trick. And so please take the time to shade in the corners. You don't have to shade very much. We're just highlighting the corners and this will come in very handy when we glue. Okay, so as of right now, your paper should look like mine. Before we make any cuts, we still have a few more lines to make. The first one is going to be over here on the right side. So I'm going to take my ruler. I'm going to use the side of my board tracing as my guide. With my non-dominant hand, I'm going to hold the ruler in place, line it up to the edge of my board, and I'm actually going to extend these two lines, or this line, all the way from edge to edge. Now, you're going to make another line on the right side of your board area. But in this time, instead of it being on the inside of the, where the board exists, it's going to be on the outside. So I'm moving my ruler out this way. I'm going to line it up against the edge of where my board would be. Hold it with my non-dominant hand so it doesn't move on me. I'm going to make a line. Now, before you completely move the ruler away, Please just take your, the tip of your pencil, hold it there, and then I want you to make a circle on top of this line. This is going to be a cut line indicator. So once you are finished with this second line out here, and you are 200% confident that you put a circle on the correct line, you may cut it off. If you are not confident, please come up and show me your work. Now we have two more easy lines to draw. We're going to repeat this same um, technique over here for these lines, but now we're going to do it at the bottom. So I'm going to turn my page so it's easier for me to draw. And the first line I'm going to make is extending out the bottom of my cover border. So I'm going to line up the ruler with the line, and I'm going to extend the lines out. Then I'm going to slide my ruler down where it's lining now to the outside of the board. I'm going to make my line. 
And then I'm going to put a circle on this line as another indicator that this is the cut line. When you are 200% sure that this is the correct cut line, you may cut it off. It is very important that you do not cut the wrong lines because if I cut this line by accident, I would completely ruin my paper and it would be unsalvageable. So you need to make sure that you correct, cut everything correctly. If you did it correctly and you put your board, your cover board back in the middle of your paper, it should look like this with a purple, perfect equal border all the way around the outside of the cover. Now that my paper is completely trimmed, I need to prepare the corners. To do this, I'm going to use my ruler as again, a tool of measurement, um, not for a traditional use of a ruler, but I am going to look at my corners and right in here, I'm gonna actually leave a gap. I'm going to use this side of my ruler as a measurement tool. So here, you can see there's a little bit of white off the corner of my ruler. On the outside of the ruler, I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna just make a dot. You can see that there is clearly a gap between the corner of my board and this dot. That's our goal. So let's watch it again. You're gonna take your ruler, and my corner here is a little, a little off, but it's okay. I'm gonna hold the ruler up, making sure that there's a gap here. And then on the opposite side of the ruler, towards the outside of the paper, I'm gonna make a little dot. And you'll find out why in a minute while we're doing this. Okay, one more time. So can you tell me, is this correct? Is this the correct position of where my dot should go? Right here? No, it is not. Because if I did it here, I would mess up my corners and my corners would actually be exposed once my paper is wrapped around the board. What about out here? Is it right out here? No, it is not correct. This is way, it's too far away. So please make sure that you just have a very small gap where you're just seeing a tiny little bit of white come through. And then on the outside of your ruler, you're going to make a dot. You may begin on your own, and when you're finished, please put your pencils down and look at me. For the next step of creating our covers, we are going to make angled corners. This step is very easy, but it can also be messed up to the point where you're going to completely ruin the inside of your cover. So please follow directions carefully. I want you to take your ruler, and the reason why we made this dot is because it's a guideline to make sure that this line is going to be far enough away. And our goal is to actually draw the line against the ruler through the dot. The other thing you want to keep in mind is we are trying to make two equal triangles right here. So you see the shape made with the ruler. There's a triangle here and a triangle here. Again, your goal is to make two equal triangles or two equal right triangles. This would be where the 90 degree angle would be set. So once you get your two equal triangles, you're going to take your ruler, and again, the goal is to go through that dot, like so. Previous classes, I have always told them to circle the dot. That way, there is no confusion about where it should be. So that is a great step that you can teach your students. But I always find that having them tell you yes or no, right or wrong, um, triangles is the best example for them. So students, are these two triangles equal? No, they are not equal. This triangle here is much larger than the right triangle that is here. What about now? No. The triangles are not equal, they are two different sizes. 
So again, to the best of your ability, if it's off a little bit, it's okay, but you don't want it to be super dramatic, like this guy being super small and then this one being very large. So again, just take your ruler, make sure it goes through this dot, make the two triangles as equal as possible, and then draw your line. I'm going to show you guys one more time to make sure that we all understand. But again, is this correct? Yes or no? No. Is this correct? Yes. So again, we are looking to create two 90 degree right triangles. And once you get your triangles equal, you're going to draw your line through that dot that we made in the previous step. You may begin if you need another example. The fourth one is being done now. Okay, now that we have all of our corners drawn, our next step is to cut these corners off. Please be sure to cut the correct line if you made a couple lines. Your goal is to make it as neat as possible, but these lines should not be anywhere near those dark shaded in corners that we drew previously. When you are finished, please place your paper in front of you with the arrow facing away. The next step will be to glue our boards. It's always smart to double check your work, measure twice, cut once, right? And make sure that in each corner, you see that there is a gap between the corner of the board and the edge of the paper. Rule of thumb, it should not be bigger than 0.25 inches or a quarter inch, but it definitely should not be as small as an eighth inch. Okay, so now that I have my paper prepped, I need to glue my board to my paper. I am actually going to glue the shiny side down that has the print on it and leave the rough edge up. So I'm going to take my glue and I'm going to apply it to the paper. Now you have to work fast. This glue will dry fairly quickly and you want to cover as much as possible of the paper. If you do not glue the entire thing, you will create air pockets and then it will cause issues down the line of what your sketchbooks will end up looking like. So it's always good to stand up above your work. You will need to hold down your board. We made a tracing for a reason, so make sure your board is within that outer border that we made as one of the very first steps of doing this. When your board is completely glued down, we are actually going to number the tabs. So you're going to put a one at the top, a two at the bottom, and a three and four on the left and right. That's again, a one at the top, two at the bottom, and three and four on the left and right. Now, we wanna create a sort of muscle memory fold for the paper before we glue it down. This will help make our edges nice and firm and to be sure we don't have any gaps in between the board and the edge of the fold. So what you're gonna do is take your paper and you're actually gonna kind of pull it this way. So Grab a good grip on it, pull it away from the board, and then wrap it around. This is going to ensure that your fold is all the way up against the edge of your board. I have had students that have not followed this step, and they come to show me their covers, and the entire cover is actually completely crooked because they didn't follow this step. There were major gaps left. 
in between the board here and that where the fold crease was. So make sure you're pulling away from the board and then around. Again, our goal is just to create a muscle like memory fold so the paper knows what it needs to do. So we labeled these for a reason. We're going to glue tabs one and two first. So please watch the board before you glue your own. You're going to cover up the tab as much as possible. You're going to grab the paper or pull it away and then wrap it around. Board. So this flap is going to want to come off. So you're going to need to hold down the flap once you get it completely sealed down to allow the glue to dry and actually hold against the cardboard of the circle box. So there's my first tab. Now I'm going to glue tab two. So again, it never hurts to just do a quick fold. Make sure you glue the entire tab. You're going to pull the tab away and wrap it around. Again, make sure that you're holding your tab nice and firm. If you notice that it's crooked, it is because the fold isn't right against the board. So you can undo the tab and refold it before it glues, complete, glues completely and you will work the paper. Okay. So now, before you glue tabs three and four, there's one quick step that we need to do. You are going to take your ruler, again, as a tool and not a measuring device, but you're going to put it against the edge of your board where this overlap from tabs one and two are going into tabs three and four. And we are going to stand it up and we're just gonna rock our ruler back and forth and create a crease right next to the board. This is going to allow for extremely sharp corners in our sketchbook and it will look nice and finished. If you are noticing that your tab does not actually even overlap into this space, you must have measured your triangles wrong and unfortunately you may have exposure once you finish gluing your tabs. So now that I have creased my corners, it really doesn't matter if I fold three or four first. Um, so I'm just gonna start over on the right side, put glue all over, grab the tab and pull it. So again, make sure you're applying enough pressure for the amount of time it needs to grip onto this, this board that we cut for our covers. And give it a chance to seal. Once that tab is done, please move to the final tab three or four, whichever order you decided to do it in. I have used other types of glue for this project, but for some reason, the glue sticks just seem to do the best job. Um, I use school glue. It takes way too long to dry. The glue stick glue seems to just do best. Um, I love the purple because it you, know, you can see where the glue is and it dries quickly enough that we can move on without having to take moments to let it dry in, in a hole. So 
If you did your board correctly, this is what yours should look like. You should have a complete covering all the way around. You shouldn't have any exposure from the inside of your board to seeing the, cup, the corner of the boards. You should have nice sharp corners where the paper is overlapping. It's basically like a cute little present that you just made. And that is how you create your cover. The next step will be placing a cover sheet here in the center of your board. 